Hello and welcome to my first video of my first channel, Hobby Hold. Uh, I'm just another wannabe tech YouTuber filming in the middle of his living room uh, with a tiny microphone. Hi mom. My wife and all my friends want me to shut the f up about whatever new hobby I've picked up this week. When I get into a new hobby, I go right down the rabbit hole and I go deep. And the next few at least will be about Casio. Uh, God, I, I love Casio. For a quick recap on why I'm so into Casio, it basically all started with my DBC611 calculator watch. Uh, I wanted something to switch it up a little bit. Ended up going for the Bluetoothy Step Tracker, the ABL100WE. And uh, from there, discovered that Casio actually did some cool stuff with Bluetooth and then walked it back a little bit. Personally, Casio might have peaked with Bluetooth on the GB5600B, but that's for another video. Stay tuned. My latest, my latest purchase was the F91W. If you're Barack Obama, Osama Bin Laden, anyone in between, dirt poor or billionaire, you've probably had this thing on your wrist once or twice and I wanted to experience it for myself. But here's, here's the thing, and this is a controversial opinion, the F91W, you're gonna tear me up in the comments here, but it kinda sucks. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it's got an accurate timer, sure. It's got an alarm, sure. It's got a stopwatch, sure. But for how cool this thing looks, it doesn't really do much. If you found this video on your own, you probably already know what sensor watch is and you just wanna build this thing. If you don't know what sensor watch is and the algorithm just gifted my dumb face to you, I'm stoked, thank you YouTube. But you probably wanna know what this is all about. So, Sensor Watch is an open source hardware project started by an awesome little company called Oddly Specific Objects. So it takes donor parts from Casio watches such as the F91W and A158. Uh, its creators have also provided an excellent framework and done some incredible documentation with some really useful examples. And here's the cool part. It has a whopping 32 megahertz processor with 32 kilobytes of RAM, and it's designed to express itself through the F91's existing display. It also has a 9-pin connector enabling GPIO and UART. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your development environment set up and build firmware for this device. Unfortunately, the board has not shown up yet. It may be another week or two before I get the light. And according to a recent post, the Pro is delayed until the end of May. I'm really excited to get my hands on that thing, but I won't have it anytime soon. For all intents and purposes, this emulator is going to have to do. It's pretty good. All right, here we are on SensorWatch's website. Take a look if you're unfamiliar with them. Uh, get a look at what they're about. It's pretty cool. So we'll go straight to documentation. This is a really helpful video if you're tearing down your F91W for the first time. Uh, if you've done it two or three times, you can probably do it blindfolded. It's a very beautifully made, simple watch. Flashing firmware onto the sensor watch. We're not gonna be doing this in the video because I don't have the physical hardware with me. And this page is what got me really excited about the sensor watch concept in the first place. I was playing around with the emulator before I actually placed a pre-order on the Pro. I thought this focus one was pretty useful. Typically I use my AE1300 as, a, as an interval timer, but this focus one uh, seems like it'll probably do the trick on my F91W. The athlete, which I was a little bummed out. I, I thought someone had this working with a heart rate monitor, but it looks like it's just a timer. Uh, the backpacker, this one actually makes use of your physical location. If you have the watch, you can program in your latitude and longitude and it will base some of the data it shows you on your location specifically. So sunrise and sunset as an example. So let's check out the backpacker. You can also download it directly and just drag it over to your watch uh, following this step here. It's pretty useful. So we're going to set our location. I think this is the sunrise and sunset based on where I am in England. Uh, kind of neat. Here's the moon that I'm gonna see tonight. And here's the temperature. Other versions of the emulator I've seen include a temperature box here so you can program that in and then it just shows you. But um, the sensor watch light has a built-in thermistor that feeds, feeds it this information. Uh, the sensor watch itself, I think you have to buy the temperature module separately, and the sensor watch pro has that built in. Very cool. You might notice something's missing from here, and that is the gamer. And that today is what we're going to build. Uh, we're going to build a set of gamer watch faces. Because some beautiful soul out there has made games for this watch, so let's go do that. So let's clone it. I'll go straight to GitHub. Joey Castillo is the creator of sensor watch. And all we need to do is clone this thing and run it. 
I'd advise against downloading it directly because there are some sub modules here that can't be ignored and they need to exist within a Git repo for some of the build scripts to work. But let's just do a Git clone and then the URL. So G-I-T space C-L-O-N-E and then paste in that URL. I'm cloning this repo into a folder that I've got locally, just or just keep everything separate, but it is a, yeah, it's just under my development folder. It doesn't take very long. So there we are. I'm gonna open this in Visual Studio Code. So now we're in Visual Studio Code. We've got this prompt to open this in a dev container. Uh, this is actually a very handy thing that the devs of this project have provided. So let's just do that. We don't need to worry about any of our prerequisites. We, so we can just rely on Docker to do what we want. We, we'll, know what, we'll know we have the right tool chain installed. Uh, all of our dependencies are there. The right Python version to run the build scripts. We don't even need to, need to mess about with anything. So here we are. Look how easy that was. It just installed. It, this might take a little bit longer for you because I've done this already, but it basically just needs to download the container image and then run the container image after all of its setup. It's done that already. This is all mounted as volume within the container. What that means is the folders here on your computer locally are shared with what's running inside of that container. The really cool thing about that is that all of the dependencies are within the container. We don't care about any local versions of anything. All of our build scripts are gonna run within that Docker container, like it's a virtual machine basically. So movement, this is where the magic happens. So you can see a bunch you can see a bunch of files in here. We don't need to operate in the terminal. Why am I doing that? We could just do that here. Movement. Make. So make alternate FW makes our firmware that runs in the browser. We've got another file. Uh, that would be movement config.h. This is basically just an array that outlines exactly what faces are going to be installed in the watch and in what order. So if you don't want all of these, you could delete some. You could even add some from our watch faces library. We've got clocks, we've got complications, we've got technical demos. Uh, this, is, this is laid out really nicely for you. So I'm just gonna do my first build. We will run our make script. So we're in movement, we need to be in make. So slash movement slash make within this folder. Under there, we can just go ahead and run that first script that I showed you. This is what I'm just about to run. So make alternate fw.sh. So it's downloading our sub modules that are missing. This is why we want to be in a Git repo. This might take a little longer because we're in Docker, but probably not that long. This is exciting, no errors. I updated GCC locally and it was not happy when I was trying to run this. So rather than debug it, I'm doing this within the container. It's so much easier. If you're on Windows, this might be the way to go as well. All right, I'm getting closer. So the first build you run takes significantly longer than the other ones. Um, your subsequent runs don't need to rebuild literally everything in the repo. We're just about there. We're just about there. It's taking a very long time. <laughs> I think it's been about five minutes. Uh, so in our simulation, we've got the HTML page that houses everything. We've got the watch.js file that is basically our clickable watch face that handles all the actions. And then we've got the brains of the watch all contained within watch.webassembly. Okay, this is taking a really long time in the container. So what I'm gonna do is clear that out a little bit just so we can make our own faces. So my variants are now just down to standard. So we're not gonna do a big loop through every single one of these that's getting built. So what I've done is basically lowered how many loops we're doing. We're literally only building this for standard. So this should only loop through once. Uh, running within Docker obviously will be a little bit slower, but we can speed it up by just doing that. And we're done, finally. It took a really, really long time. Let's check out what we built. So firmware, simulate, standard. So these are the three files that are mentioned right here. Uh, we talked about those earlier. We've got index.html that houses the demo. We've got watch.js that provides the input. Uh, and then watch.webassembly that is basically the firmware. So we can run this.
So the slightly inconvenient part about being within a dev container is any outside action that we need to trigger within that dev container is probably going to fail because we're within a VM. Uh, so EM run, for example, is going to fail if we run it. So we're gonna do EM run. Uh, we're gonna do firmware simulate standard index. And yeah, there's the error. Just like I mentioned, it can't, it can't find the browser Firefox within the VM. So what we can make an argument for is no underscore browser. And boom, there we go. Now it is listening at this port. So dev containers typically map to your local host environment. So you should just be able to access this through localhost. So port 6931. And we will do, we'll copy in that address and we'll just do localhost. And boom, there we go. There we go. There, there are all the faces that we, we that we've just seen here. So here we are back in Movement Config. Let's build the gamer watch of our dreams. So we probably don't care about any of this. We need the simple clock face. That's the important one. Uh, we might want to set a down countdown underscore face for when we put our oven pizza in the oven and need it to count down. This is also something the F91W doesn't have. Uh, and then invaders face. There are also a couple other ones like Wordle. Uh, we can add that. Uh, I think there's a butterfly game as well. I actually don't know how to play that. Ah, screw it. Let's do it. Butterfly game face. So let's rebuild this. We'll run that make script. Okay, now we're done. So let's run the emulator. Uh, we'll reopen our browser, give it a refresh. 1631. I think the port's still the same. Yeah, 1631. Uh, we've got our default face. Yeah, we've got our countdown pizza timer, and then we've got Wordle. So it looks like there's not enough room for all these faces, which is a little bit unfortunate. So we're just gonna have to pick the ones we like the most to run, uh, but we've just got the bare essentials here. We've got the simple clock face, we've got the countdown face for timing your pizza, and then we've got the invaders face, which is a really fun game that used to be available on the old, ca on old uh, Casio calculators. Uh, good game to make your teachers angry. Let's run this build. So we're just running that make firmware or make alternate firmware script again. This should take a couple of minutes to run. Okay, we're done. So let's run this emulator again. Now, before we run our first set of faces that we just built, I just want to plug something really quick. Obviously, this is my first video, so I don't have a sponsor. So I just love to show you a charity that my wife has been working really closely with. They're called the Duo Duo Project. Their whole mission is to end the dog and cat meat trade in China by ensuring that dogs and cats are seen as friends and family, not food. They've done some incredible work recently, and you can check them out by scanning the QR code or clicking the link below. Please donate if you can. Give it a refresh. Here we are. So we've got the countdown timer. And we've got our game. Countdown, game. Oh. Countdown, game. So we can play Space Invaders by clicking start. And we basically just need to get these numbers lined up and hit fire. So uh, <laughs> this game is very stressful for what it is especially in this emulator when everything's so tiny and difficult to hit, but there we go. I got hundred points. That's basically it. If you want to run this on the watch, we've basically got our builds right here. You can take the firmware that you did uh, and download it and the standard stuff that we've done. This should correspond with what we've just built. But standard green will go to the green board. Standard red will go to the red boards and standard blue is going to go to the blue boards. Uh, the firmware, the architecture is a little bit different from board to board from my understanding, so you just need to pick the right one. That's basically it for the demo. You now have a fully functional gamer watch. Very, very cool stuff. Enjoy, enjoy your new Casio F91W with its fancy new brain, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. All right, so that basically concludes the video. There are a couple other cool things you can do with this, and in the next video, when one of my boards shows up, I'm hoping to have a demo ready for you. Uh, we can run through building a custom face. I know they've got a tutorial on the Sensor Watch website, but maybe we could just build our own face from there. That'd be pretty exciting. 
So like I said earlier, we've got two sensor watch boards showing up. We've got the sensor watch Lite and we've got the sensor watch Pro. The Lite should be here in a couple of weeks. The Pro is going to take probably until about the end of May. Until then, please subscribe and like this video if you liked what I did. I'd love to create more of these deep diving my latest obsessions and things that I'm recently into. I need an outlet, so please give me some encouraging feedback. I had a great time making this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.